In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create a bright and colorful crayon etching. You're going to need some materials for this. You're obviously going to need some drawing paper. I suggest using heavier drawing paper, at least 70 pound or greater, and some drawing paper that has a little bit of tooth to it, so a little bit of texture to accept those crayons. You're obviously going to need some crayons. I suggest crayons that have a bit of wax in them, but also are heavy with the pigmentation. Crayola or Prang will work great. You're going to need either ink or temper paint. You can use either of those uh, materials to cover the crayon. If you go with ink, I would suggest using Super Black India Ink by Speedball. And temper paint, of course, will work as well. You're going to need either permanent markers or a brush to paint the ink on the surface. And then you're going to need some scratching tools. Etching tools work great, but you can also pick up those wooden skewers at the grocery store. They also get the job done as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch out our composition. And I've noticed that really brightly colored scenes are going to work best for this. So uh, in this case, I'm going to do a tropical scene. We're going to have a a tropical fish here surrounded by brightly colored things that you might find underneath the ocean. And we're just going to do a line drawing here. We're not going to worry about adding any value or shading. We're just concerned about the overall shapes. We're going to keep the drawing simple. The details are going to come from the patterns that we add when we start to scratch the ink off of the surface. So a very simplified drawing here just using the contour lines. Now that we've got that drawing on the surface, we can go over the top of the lines using ink. Now this is where you would use a permanent marker if you didn't want to brush the ink on. I'm using a brush to brush the ink directly out of the container here onto the surface because that's going to give me a variety of different line qualities here. I'm going to have some lines that are a little bit thicker and some lines that are a little bit thinner. Now it's also important to note that the lines here need to be pretty thick. You don't want to grab that micron pen, for example, and start making the lines because when you start to scratch out the patterns on the surface, you're going to be scratching away a surface that's completely black, either covered with tempera paint or covered with ink. And you're going to, you're going to want to know when you run into the edge of something so you can change your pattern. So the lines here are pretty thick, almost like a coloring book. Once your ink has dried completely, you can use an eraser to erase any of the pencil lines away, and then it's time to start coloring. Now, remember, crayons are a uh, material that can be used in a very artistic way, actually. You can mix colors to a certain degree and create gradations of color and value, and that's what I'm doing here on the fish. I'm using three different oranges, or three different crayons, rather. I'm using an orange, a red orange, and a yellow to color in the different areas on the fish. Now, it's also important to note that any area that's going to be white on the surface, you've got to use a white crayon. Um, the whole surface needs to be covered with a layer of wax. Any areas that do not have crayon applied to them will not scratch off with the scratching tools when you get to that point. Now, I'm going to put a few waves here in the background. I'm going to create several different blues, three different blues, just to add a little bit of variety to the water in the background. Now you might also notice that I'm coloring really heavily. You want to cover all of those white specks on the surface of the paper. Any of those white specks will pick up the ink and you won't be able to scratch them off. So you've got to apply a whole lot of pressure here and really get a nice layer of wax on the surface. And that's the reason why this whole thing works. You're using a water-based media, either ink or temper paint, to go over the top of the wax. And of course, the wax is going to resist that water-based application, which will allow you to scratch it off, revealing the colors of the waxy crayons underneath. So once we've got the entire surface covered, we've got all the white specks covered, we're ready to apply the ink or the temper paint. I'm using the ink here. I like the way that the ink has a shiny finish when you're finished scratching everything off. The temper paint is a matte finish when everything is complete. If you want that shiny finish, of course, you can put any type of gloss acrylic sealant over the top of it, and, and that will create that shiny appearance. But with the ink, you don't have to do that. Now that the ink surface has completely dried, you can see here I'm going back and I'm scratching out patterns. Now, this is the part that's going to take the longest amount of time, and I'm going to change my pattern for 
each area of color. I'm going to work slowly here because I want the patterns to really be the star of the image. And I'm trying to pick patterns that are interesting for each area. So the water in the background, I'm creating swirls. And for all of these little pink things that come up here, I'm kind of creating a broken pattern on those, which are a bit organic. You can see here I'm trying to scratch away an area and nothing is coming up. That's because that's an area where I applied the ink with the brush. That lets me know that that is the edge of the fish or an element on the fish where I don't have any color. Now I'm also trying to create a pattern that's going to scratch a lot of the ink off, allowing a lot of the color to show through. Since there's so much black in the image, the tendency is the overall image might be a little bit dark. So we want to create patterns that are nice and bold and allow a lot of that bright color to shine through. Now, as I mentioned before, when you get to an area that you can't scratch off, you know that's the edge of something and you know it's time to change your pattern. And that's basically how this whole thing works. Of course, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and apply more temper paint or more ink to the surface. But each time you do that, it's a little bit harder to scratch those areas off. You can also lift up your paper and see through it, basically, if you hold it up to light. And you can see those areas where you've outlined different elements within the scene. So you can get very creative with your patterns here and make them tie in with the scene if you'd like. It's worth noting that this type of imagery works best on larger compositions like say 18 by 24. This is a relatively small image for demonstration purposes, but large images are nice and bright and interesting to look at. Now I'm going back with the ink and I'm just touching up areas where I might have scratched off too much of the ink from the surface, creating a little bit inconsistency there with the patterns. You can always go back and touch things up when you are finished. And there's a quick look at how to create a crayon etching, a very easy project to create brightly colored imagery. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, why not check out our comprehensive membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes great video courses, weekly live instruction, downloadable eBooks, and even lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the button in the corner to learn more now. You can also get three free course modules from our program. One from the Secrets to Drawing, one from Pastel Landscape Mastery, and a third from the Oil Painting Master Series. Each module includes a video and an ebook. To learn more about how you can get your free course modules, again, just click on the button in the corner. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get access to all of the new videos as we publish them. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in your artistic journey.